Happy St. Patrick's Day. And this beautiful day, it is a gift to be together. Welcome to Rigadoo. Thank you so much for helping us with the gift of your music this morning. Such a blessing. Welcome to Sophie Agar's family. It is a blessing to have you with us this morning as well. And any visitors we have this morning, welcome. For those of us who are regulars, please help our visitors to feel at home. Um, some announcements we have this morning. Good morning. My name is Kane Tews. I am with the membership, <laughs> membership and growth ministry. I uh, just want to let you know we have set a date for the uh, progressive dinner, which is going to be May 4th. We, I believe we have three people that will be hosting. Um, so now we just need people to sign up. There's a sign up in, in Salter Hall um, so we can kind of get a count uh, of who's going to uh, be attending. It's a, it's a heavy hors d'oeuvre progressive dinner, so it's not, it's, it, and it, we allot enough time for people to go for, to, to each house for 20 to 30 minutes, and this will be our second uh, attempt at doing this um, heavy, heavy hors d'oeuvre progressive dinner, and it's, it's a lot of fun, and um, again, if you want, if you can make it, sign up. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Today, after church, we will be having a Guatemalan fiesta to raise money for the Guatemala trip this summer. It'll be from 11 to 2 downstairs, and there'll be food, fun activities, and games, and we hope to see you all there. God of Sabbath, you are the place where we stand on the day when our feet are sore. In this time of worship, refresh us and renew us. God of community, you are our light, our hope, and our stronghold. Help us remember that we are deep in the shelter of you and one another. Teach us your way, God. Show us your path through all that life brings. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us join now in singing our opening hymn, Be Now My Vision, number 451.
before we read our prayer of confession, I just want to draw your attention to uh, one word that's in here. It's, it has a little asterisk next to it. The, the word is pronounced kurach, and it's an Irish boat. Um, I, I thought about changing this word, um, but I thought maybe instead I would just explain what it was because I loved the um, imagery of it. A kurach is a um, wooden frame boat that they then stretch um, the uh, animal skins over. And so when it's talking about the kurach and the strain of, um, uh, and the stain of the ocean blackens beneath it, um, the, the animal skins are starting to wear down and the, the water is starting to seep in. So I just love that imagery. So now knowing that information and knowing that it's pronounced kurach, let's begin. There are days, O oh Lord, when weight deadens my shoulders and I stumble. May my dance with you balance me out. And when my eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into me, may your grace of innumerable colors, of indigo, red, green, and azure blue, come to awaken in me a meadow of delight and forgiveness. When the canvas frays in the kurach of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath, May your compassion come across the waters as a path of yellow moonlight to bring me safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be mine. May the clarity of light be mine. May the fluency of the ocean be mine. May the protection of the ancestors be mine. And may a slow wind work these words of love around me as an invisible cloak to mind my life and keep me walking your way of light, hope, and love. Amen. Friends, know that we are forgiven and loved. And as beloved children of God, whenever we gather, we are in God's spirit in a special way. But as we are reminded when Sophie is baptized this morning, we are always loved. And as we are together in God's spirit now, let us share the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding with each other by simply telling those around you, Christ's peace be with you and Christ's peace be with you. Come on up. It is so great to be worshiping with you and to have you here. What a gift and blessing. Good morning, good morning. Come on up. So last night for our youth lock-in, we had a ton of fun, didn't we? We did, okay, so we did some fun games, but one of the things we did was we tasted some gross Harry Potter-like jelly beans. And they were, have you had those? They're delicious. They were flavors like rotten egg and... Rotten egg and earthworm and boogers and... So I was wondering, let's see if you can make it. Can you come up with me? Because I'm going to have you move around, and I want you to see what the folks on the, the pews are going to do too. So can you come up here behind me? Okay. So now I'm wondering, can you give me your gross face? Like, like if you just ate a jelly bean that tastes like rotten egg, and it's really yucky. Give me your gross face. Oh, okay. Okay, so now the rest of you, show them your gross face. Let's see, you just ate a jelly bean that's supposed to taste like earthworm. Oh, those are some pretty good gross faces. What do you think? You would spit it out? I think and a, lot of the, a lot of kids did that last night too. Okay, so now... 
can you give me your sad face? When you're feeling sad, oh, those are some really sad faces. Okay, let's give the kids our sad faces. Do you have sad faces? Do you see some sad faces out there? Oh yeah, there's some sad faces. How about happy faces? Happy faces, yes, you're excited. Happy, excited face. Alex, is that your happy, excited face? It is. <laughs> that's, that's just like my son's happy, excited face, too. <laughs> okay, so let's show the kids your happy and excited faces. Yeah, do you see that? Okay, how about mad? Do you have like a super mad face you give? Do you give a super mad face? Oh, look at good Charles. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Way to go, Charles. <laughs> okay, grown-ups, what's your mad face? Oh, you see some mad faces? Do they scare you at all? No? A good mad faces. Okay, so one of the things I want us to think about today is we have all of these feelings and all of these times in our lives when we feel different ways, Right? Who has ever felt sad? Who's felt sad? Oh, see? Everybody has. Okay, who's felt happy? Yay. Who has felt really, really mad at sometimes? Yeah, you can say it, yeah. Who has felt confused and anxious and scared at times? Yeah, I think we all have. The one thing that we are reminded today, and we're going to have you sit up here for the baptism so that you can watch it, is that no matter how we are feeling, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're experiencing, God loves us and God is with us. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that, but it's important to remember that God loves you no matter what and you, 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 and you. So, the baptism today, and just like every other baptism, we use water, right? And the water is special because it symbolizes cleansing, it symbolizes being nourished, and it symbolizes being loved and being loved by God in a very special way. So whether or not you've been baptized, I want you to come and just touch the water. And whenever you have a bath, whenever you take a shower, whenever you take a drink of water, whenever you splash in a pool and you're in water, to remember, what do I want you to remember? What do you think, Laura Lee? God loves you. And God is always with you. So why don't you come and I just want you to touch the water and to remember that you are loved. And you can go ahead and sit down and we will finish with a short prayer. Why don't you sit up here? Because I want you to be here for the baptism. And remember that you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Are always loved and may you are always loved let's pray holy and gracious God we give you thanks for this day we give you thanks for the precious gift of life we give you thanks for each child and youth who is here for each adult we ask that you help us to know the breath of your love in our lives always amen Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now I'm going to invite Sophie to come on up and to bring her parents with her. And if Parker is in here, she can bring Parker up here too. But Parker might be in the nursery. And I'm going to ask Julie Johnson to come on up. Julie is our moderator our wonderful church leader.
Sophie. Mm, do you know the Greek word Sophia is wisdom? And in the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, Sophia is God's wisdom. And you have some other responses in the bulletin, I believe. Blessed is God, creator of the universe, whose love and kindness extend to all the world. Blessed is God, spirit of the universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this happy day. O oh God, for the gift of this beautiful child, we give you thanks. We rejoice with you, Andrea and Clint, that Sophie has been entrusted to your home. We are glad that you have brought her here to express your gratitude and to declare your purpose to raise her in the ways of God and in communi communion with Jesus, our Savior. You are following an ancient custom rooted in the hearts of devout and grateful people of faith. We believe that God made human life to be good and that children share in the original blessing of all living things. In this moment of dedication and grace, we praise the goodness of God as shown in Jesus. We commit the unknown future that lies before this child to God's wisdom, grace, and love. So now I ask you, Andrea and Clint, will you raise this child in a home where trust is cultivated where love is your guiding principle and a gracious spirit prevails? Will you participate in communities and provide opportunities where she may encounter that which is sacred and worthy in life and where she may learn and appreciate her heritage? Will you teach her to follow Christ's way, seeking God's guidance, God's presence, resisting evil, embracing goodness, and loving and serving others? If so, say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given to you to grow alongside your child in Christian faith, grounded in and supported by the faith community to, with which you worship, pray, study, and serve, that one day your child will know the love of God in Christ Jesus and come to affirm her baptism if so, respond, I do with the help of God. I do with the help of God. Will those who are able please stand as together we pledge our love and support. We covenant with you, with you to, to be, be a, a caring, caring community, community on behalf of your child. We rejoice in the hope and love that she represents. We unite with you to labor and pray for her spiritual growth, that she may come to know and trust the goodness of God. On behalf of the whole Church of Jesus Christ, we welcome her. Let us pray. Creator God, loving parents have come into your presence to voice the longings of their heart in prayer. Give them the ability to teach this child wisely, that she may grow up knowing you are always near, guiding and sustaining her. May she ever be conscious of the beauty and wonder of our world. Let her learn to love the goodness which surrounds her, that she may ever nourish the goodness within. We humbly ask that you give her the courage to face challenges, trusting in your grace and the faith to glorify you. Amen. And holy and gracious God, bless this water, this cleansing water, a gift of love, so that we may be reminded of our own baptisms and so that the beautiful children of God who are here, each of us may know your spirit with us and that we have been claimed as your own in baptism. And in this water, bless and baptize Sophie so that she grows knowing your great and wonderful love and that love will never, ever leave her. So, Andrea and Clint, what name have you given to this beautiful child? Sophie Anya Agar. Sophie Anya Agar. And I 
hold you for just a second, then I'll, get, I'll let mom hold you. <laughs> <laughs> And the witnesses of your family and this congregation and in God, Sophie, Anya, Agar, I baptize you, beloved child of God, in the name of the Father and the Son <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. That is a beautiful smile to share with everybody. You are claimed as Christ's own Beloved, and nothing can change that. Sophie, Anya, Agar, may you know and radiate the light of Christ, bringing hope, peace, grace, and love into the world. And we have a book for you. And Parker maybe can help you start reading it to help you remember God's love for you. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make her face shine upon you and give you peace, dear beloved child of God. And now we'll have everybody sing. I was there to hear your morning cry. And that is number 351. We will have Sophie bring her parents around the sanctuary so that you can greet and share your affirmation and blessing with Sophie. And kids, you can head on back with your families. A big welcome and blessing to Sophie, to Clint, and Andrea, and their family, and Parker. Please be sure to take a moment after worship to show your affirmation, your care, and your support. And God's blessings to each of you. You can go ahead and sit back down.
The first reading is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off, do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord.
that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Our gospel reading today comes in the middle of the story and can leave us, or at least leaves me, scratching my head. What is Jesus saying? What's wrong with Jerusalem? Where is Paul Harvey when you want to know the rest of the story? To find the start of this journey, we need to go back to the ninth chapter of Luke. This is where Jesus begins his pilgrimage to Jerusalem and ultimately the cross. If we were to read between chapter nine and our reading today, we would see crowds of people from Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem witnessing tremendous signs of Jesus' way of love as he healed, delivered, and preached his way to Jerusalem. It says he's walking this path that some Pharisees come and warn him that Herod is out for his blood and implore Jesus to run and save his life, and Jesus refuses. Instead, he will keep to this arduous road, traveling to Jerusalem to meet his death there like so many prophets of God before him. Christian tradition teaches us that Jesus was fully divine, but that he was also fully human. So my question is, how did this man continue to face the prospect of a torturous death with such immense courage? Sure, you can point to his divinity and say that Jesus knew the rest of the story, that he saw the resurrection. But I'd like to take a more human view of Jesus. I think he had such courage because he had built and continued to nourish a community of love and belonging with his disciples, his friends. There's a beautiful phrase used in West Kerry in Ireland when talking about trust. It's what I called the sermon. So if you want to look in your bulletin, I'll tell you how to pronounce the, the Gaelic. It's Maheasa Wat La No Tenne. At least that's what I think it is. <laughs> Does anyone speak Gaelic? Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> and what this phrase means is you are the place where I stand on the day when my feet are sore. This is such soft, tender, yet tangible language. And I think that that's how I would paraphrase what Jesus is saying when he says that he'd like to gather Jerusalem children, Jerusalem's children under his wings like a hen gathers her chicks. It's how I would paraphrase all of Psalm 27 as it talks about God being our, our salvation, God being our stronghold. Jesus is reiterating, Psalm 27 is reiterating our need to have communities of love and belonging, places to stand on days our feet are sore, to have those places and people that give us life, that nourish our souls, that remind us of who we truly are. God is our stronghold, our hope, our light. God is for us that place where we can stand on the day that our feet are sore. And this is what God desires for us to be for one another. This is, the truly, this is truly the beloved community, the way of Jesus, the kingdom of God. This is what will give us the strength, courage, and nourishment that we need to meet the fractures of the world around us with deep healing. But how do we create this community of love and belonging? It begins with vulnerability, with storytelling, with understanding. In her books, Daring Greatly and the Gifts of Imperfection, Brene Brown writes candidly and movingly about the importance of being vulnerable 
and the challenges in doing so. Brene, uh, who is a researcher and a, a um, psychologist, found that people who lived healthy, wholehearted lives had the courage to be vulnerable. Courage comes from the Latin word meaning core, or not meaning core, it's the Latin word core, meaning heart. The original definition of this word when it came into the English language was to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart. And so these wholehearted, healthy people had very simply the courage to be imperfect. They fully embraced vulnerability. They believed what made them vulnerable made them beautiful. This isn't new. Scripture is constantly reminding us that we are to embrace our vulnerability and to share, uh, share that vulnerability with our siblings of faith. And that through this, we find healing and wholeness. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. Or 1 John 3.18-21 says, When we live as people of truth and action, we are reassured of our wholeness, whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. But are we comfortable thinking about our congregation this way? Do we want our congregation to be a place of real vulnerability, or do we look to worship and our congregational life as places to bolster our sense of stability, goodness, and perfection? Are we willing to see our congregation as, to quote Pope Francis, my favorite pope, are we willing to look at our congregation as a field hospital? Are we willing to be totally exposed and vulnerable with one another, sharing openly and honestly our faults, our fears, our sins, and then, in turn, listening to the stories of those around us? Hebrews 4:14 4, through 16 reads, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace, uh, grace to help in time of need. We have a God who walks with us through the monkey swampland of our souls. Shouldn't we then accompany one another? The Irish poet and theologian Patrick Otuma tells this story. He led a two-day encounter where participants were asked to share their stories and to simply listen to the stories of others, striving for understanding. One of the men had chosen the word fundamentalist to describe himself as a Christian. At the end of this gathering, that man said to the others, I have a question for all the homosexuals in the room. And part of Patrick wanted to go, well, we don't really like that word, but he thought, let's wait and hear the question. And the man went on, I want to know how many times since we met together in this last while have my words bruised you? And somebody next to Patrick went, Oh, you're lovely. You're very nice. And the man said, No, don't patronize me. How many times have my words bruised you? And the fellow next to Patrick started to count. One, two, three, four. And then he goes, I've given up after the first hour. And then this man who had gone to the edges of his own understanding and asked others to help populate that edge with information and insight said, are you telling me that it's painful for you to be around me? It's from this place of naked vulnerability that true healing and wholeness can begin. It's from that place of naked vulnerability that we can begin to build that community of love and belonging, that we can share with one another our deepest hurts and we can hear those hurts and perhaps make changes in our own lives. Vulnerability is frightening. There's nothing more uncomfortable than being exposed as someone who doesn't have it at all together or confessing our shortcomings to others. And yet, as we look around at the faces of those around us, how many of us force smiles and hide struggles behind perfectly constructed facades? Christianity is not about having it all together. We are fragile people, and we all carry stories of brokenness within us. What is amazing is that God says to each one of us, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. Do we have the courage to truly reach out in healing love 
and say, say the same to one another. Maheasa wotla no choish atenna. You are the place where I stand on the day when my feet are sore. May it be so among us. Amen. God of baptism, love, and hope, we are your children. You have formed this world with great creativity, showing the depth and beauty of your spirit. You have formed each one of us with loving care, something we recall and affirm every time we baptize someone. Rain upon us your love, a love that extends beyond our personal lives to a needy world. Help us as individuals and as a congregation live up to the vows we have made to nurture and care for each other and to grow in faith together. And we pray today, especially for Sophie and her family, that you help them to know the abundance of your love in their lives and the many gifts and blessings of that love. There are many things which bring to us great joy and delight. We pray, help us to feel your presence amidst the joy in our lives, both the simple delights and grand surprises. Give us the heart and wisdom to choose your joy, especially when it is difficult to see. There are many things we struggle with in this world, O oh God, such as tragic accidents or senseless killing of others because of hatred and the many isms that differentiate people. The shootings in Christ Church and Ethiopian plane crash break our hearts. Help us to feel your presence amidst the pain and sorrow and take to heart the great healing you bring into the world. Enable us to be your healing agents. Give us the faith and strength to believe in you, to believe you are at work and to have hope even when the world tells us not to. Whether we are immersed in your joy or struggling in this world, it is your great love we each want to know better. Open our eyes so that we can see the soft and the powerful ways you touch this world with your love. For with you there is always hope. As Jesus showed us, nothing can separate us from your love. And now in a moment of silence, we open our hearts before you, sharing joys, confessions, and concerns.
Pour your Holy Spirit upon us, O Lord, that we may feel your presence in our lives and in the world in reassuring ways. We give you thanks that as your children we now pray together, saying, God, who is in us here on earth, holy is your name in the hungry who share their bread and their song. May your reign come, which is a land flowing with milk and honey. Let us do your will, raising our voice when all are silent. You are giving us our daily bread in the song of the bird and the miracle of the corn. Forgive us for keeping silent in the face of injustice. Don't let us fall into the temptation of taking up the same arms as the enemy, but deliver us from evil. Give us the perseverance to look for love, even if we fail, so we shall have known your reign of love, which is being built forever and ever. Amen. benediction today we're going to do something a little different because I want to remind us that we are a community of love and belonging however you feel come reach out and uh, grab the hand or, or touch the person next to you with their consent and uh, let us join together in our unison prayer or our uni unison benediction may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back may the Sun shine warm upon your face the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Go in peace, friends. <laughs>